What's up, Nail Geeks, and welcome back to another spooky tacular video. This time I have Wildflower Lacquer's Halloween collection to show off. This is her fall set. And if you did not know, Wildflower Lacquer is rebranding for the new year. So this release and then the uh, December release, um, her uh, bringing back older shades, things like that. These are going to be the last for Wildflower Lacquer. She's not going anywhere. She is coming back as Royla Lee in honor of her grandma. That's going to be the uh, the new brand. It's super exciting and I'm pumped for her. I'm excited for her new journey in this regard for her brand and just all the growth and all that fun stuff. So we have all types of nostalgia for this release. These are uh, polishes inspired after things that if you're a millennial like myself, you're going to recognize a lot of these inspirations. And we have a beautiful mix of finishes. There's foily stuff, there's shimmers. We've got some magnetics, which I don't think outside of um, PPU for this month, I've seen Wildflower do a magnetic, I think. Don't quote me on that. Something for everyone. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Taking this off with Wicked Witch Nails. This is a dark maroon red base with red to gold micro flake shimmer. This one's inspired by the fake witch fingers. If you check out uh, Wildflower Locker's Facebook group, you can see images of all of the inspirations. They match up so well. Wicked Witch Nails is what I would describe as being a somewhat foil type of finish. Though it's not large particle shimmer per se, we have more of a, a flake, a true flake. So very much like the official description. I'm going to suggest three coats, a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat. Three coats is going to maximize that red base the best. This is a deep dark red and it has a lovely gold shift to it at angles like on my macro shot. Frank Me Up with Party Favors is a bright pink base with subtle teal to purple to pink Shifting Shimmer. This one's inspired by, of course, Lisa Frank Halloween Party Favors. We have a creamy, smooth formula. This one applied very satisfying on the nail, and I'm going to suggest between two to three coats. Depending on the length of your free edge, how big or small your nails are, all of those factors is going to depend on whether or not you stop at two normal or three lighter to normal coats. I chose to take it up to three normal for me coats, and it was perfect. Again, I have very huge nails, so that's going to depend. It does dry down almost matte, so use a glossy top coat to maximize that shimmer. Caramel Apple Pop is described as a light tan base with gold to green to blue shifting shimmer and scattered red to gold microflake shimmer. This one's inspired by those Caramel Apple Pops candy. I recently got one in a PR package and I was so bummed that my oldest came over and just snatched it <laughs> right up. I'm going to have to go get a bag here pretty soon. Our target is starting to put out Halloween stuff. Anyways, Caramel Apple Pop leaned heavily neutral against yours truly. So I think it's going to play up against your respective skin tone. To me, it's very much a true tan type of base. And then the shimmer just kind of warms it up. It's almost like an amped up office neutral. I'm going to suggest three coats and a glossy top coat, and it does dry down flat. Let's Watch Horror Movies is described as a smoky gray blue base with blue to purple shifting shimmer. This one's inspired by cozying up on the couch watching movies. One of my favorite things to do with my, my people in my house. So we have a Crelly type of formula. This starts off on the milky side, but it packs a very wonderful punch, if punches can be wonderful, that is, on that third coat. If you don't mind a softer, truer, milkier type of finish, you can absolutely stop at the second coat. Otherwise, you'll have a bit of a peekaboo effect with your smile line if you have a prominent free edge. So my recommendation, go up to that third coat. This dries down flat. Be careful of over buildup because we have a true plumping formula and finish with a glossy top coat. Sea Spot Scared is a light yellow base with red to gold micro flake shimmer and hollow flakes. This one's inspired by spot books. And we have a, what I consider a foil finish going here. The base color to this is what I would describe as a true primary, nice and bright, sunny type of yellow. Now what's going to give it that reddish type of lean, of course, is that wonderful micro flake shimmer. There's an easy, almost reddish, copperish type of 
cast to it in normal lighting situations like what you see on the video here and at angles it has a stronger type of shift if that makes sense. Finish with a good glossy top coat because this will dry down very flat. Beanie Baby Boom is a white base with orange and black hollow glitters and scattered pink to aqua crystal flakes. We have another Crelly going on here. This one has a very Crelly base, meaning it's got a bit of a squish factor to it. And I wanted to maximize all those glitters on my nails. So I chose to go in quite light on my coats and I went up to three of them. I think that's going to maximize that nice pond effect the best. And you'll see the, the glitters in between your coats and you won't have much buildup. So take this one light, use a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat to seal everything up and give you that nice gel like appearance. And you're good to go. This one's so clean looking, if that makes sense. Ghost Face is a magnetic. This is described as a gray base with red to orange to gold magnetic pigment. This one's inspired by its namesake. Ghost Face has a heavy type of formula to it and it applies pretty dang opaque on the nail. I still went up to three coats on it because at first I was kind of taken aback with how opaque it was applying. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to take this slow and steady and there's a certain type of thickness that I'm looking for. And so I, I found that that third coat was the best. When you don't magnetize it, it's this very glowy type of coppery appearance. But of course, when we magnetize it, we've got this stark contrast, loads of movement after you gloss up your nails and it's very, very shifty. So an easy shift over to gold at angles. Now this dried down incredibly flat, pretty much like a matte. So use a good glossy top coat to, again, maximize the movement on the magnetic pigment. The Headless Ghost is a deep blurple base with pink to gold shifting shimmer. This one's inspired by Goosebumps books, specifically the Headless Ghost. And we have a lush, lush polish. This is straight jelly action, but it is incredibly opaque. Any little imperfection you're seeing on my nail there is just because I was swatching like a lot of polishes that day and my falsies were like, no ma'am, we're done. So please note the polish itself is perfect. The Headless Ghost is opaque on that second coat if you go in normal, but it does have a very thirsty dry down to it. So I chose to take it up to three coats. So your preference, whether or not you go to two or three, this did stain my falsies. And I don't think photos are going to do this type of finish justice because the shimmer is fine particle and it's got a light type of gold shift at angles. Buckets of Boo is described as a vampy orange base with red to gold to green crystal flakes and scattered blue to purple UCC flakes. This one's inspired by McDonald's Boo Buckets. So we have a jelly type of formula going on here. I was very hesitant on whether or not I was going to take this one up to two or three coats. I chose to stop at two coats because it does have a heavy type of buildup with all of that flaky goodness. It dries them very, very flat too. So make sure you use a good glossy top coat for best representation. Please look at my full hand shot on the video. Here lies Beetle Juice is a dusty olive green base with blue to indigo shifting shimmer. This one's inspired by, of course, its namesake. If I had to pick top picks from this set, I would have to pick this one and I would also have to pick Let's Watch Horror Movies and probably another one that's coming up here shortly. But uh, these types of glowy blue type of shimmers always have my heart. Now, Beetlejuice has a Crelly formula. It applies very similar to Let's Watch Horror Movies. So I'm going to suggest two to three coats. I personally found that I liked three coats the best for maximum shimmer payoff. It dries on flat, so use a good glossy top coat. Speaking of that third top pick, this is the next one. This is Can I Keep You? It's described as a clear base with pink to orange to gold to green shifting shimmer and subtle blue glow in the dark effect. This one's inspired by Casper, of course. Now, this is what I would describe as a milky finish, a true milky finish. You're going to see a touch of your visible nail line if you have a free edge of any type as you build this up. It's very soft, almost what I would classify as a sheer finish. So I chose to take it to three coats and I used a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat 
to kind of plump it up overall. The way it dries down is quite matte, which is indicative to glow in the dark pigments. So again, use a good glossy top coat. I did charge my nails with a nail lamp, a gel nail lamp, and that's how I got the photo here. It does glow quite a bit blue in the dark, nice and vibrant there. Let me get my best Robert Stack voice. Perhaps you can help solve a mystery. <laughs> this is described as a black tinted base with purple to pink to gold to green shifting shimmer. This one's inspired by, of course, the original Unsolved Mysteries show. I've binged like all of the new podcasts too, just PS. Anyways, this one is what I would consider a type of metallic type of multi-chrome shift. It is very easy to build to opacity. I still chose to take it to three coats. Go light on those brush strokes to prevent any type of potential streaking and finish with a good glossy top coat. This will dry down very, very chrome-like and very flat. So make sure it's a thicker glossy top coat in my opinion. Night of Frights is a limited edition glitter bomb. It's got linear holographic pigment, scattered black and orange hollow glitters, moon glitters, and star glitters. So because this has a very plumping type of base to it, I chose to just apply it normal, no icing method. And I'm doing this over caramel apple pop. I wanted to use something from the collection to show it off, but I also wanted to do something a little neutral in the backdrop to not detract from what we're seeing with the glitters. Now the moons and the stars, I didn't have to go fishing in the bottle but I did have to pluck them up from the brush. And you'll wanna do careful placement with these just in general to make everything nice and even. I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like this. I prefer to do this. And that's also because I'm taking photos too. So I would recommend doing that. Just apply it normal to get all the small and medium types of glitters. And then those chonkier type of glitters are so worth it. Get them with a water marbling tool or a dotting tool like what I'm doing and just apply it straight to your nails. They did lay down pretty dang flat for my nails because I, I do have a very strong C curve and I didn't have anything poking up. Please know I did use a glitter smoothing top coat with my glossy top coat. Bat to the Bone is described as a shimmery gold to green shifting base with tiny bat glitters and glows in the dark. $6 of every bottle sold will be donated to batworld.org. I will link that in the description box below if you'd like more information. This is straight up sheer goodness. Of course, this is going to top her really well. And if you wanted to wear it solo, I'm going to suggest three really light coats. It's got a plumping factor to it and it's got a heavier type feel and it dries on quite matte, which again, indicative to a glue in the dark pigment. The bats themselves, when you get your bottle, at least for me, they did kind of sink down to the bottom a little bit but I had no issues getting them to reconstitute throughout the bottle by just kind of hand mixing it. So keep your bottle upside down for maybe five minutes or so before you apply, probably during your prep time, keep it upside down. And I think you'll be just fine. The shimmer to this is quite strong. It's got an easy shift between that gold and green type effect. And again, I think this is going to be very versatile. Those back glitters are going to give you some texture. So use a glitter smoothing top coat with it. And we're going to finish this up with the Willet Topper segment. This is where I use a black swatch stick to demonstrate if polishes have layering capabilities. Wicked Witch Nails works very well over black. I liked this very vampy type of look and you can see just how much flakes are in it. Frank Me Up actually looks really cool over black. Personally, I would not topper it though. I just, I really appreciated that unique base color. Caramel Apple Pop, same thing. I would not do this. It is too curly in my opinion. Let's watch horror movies and Beetlejuice. Both work. Just be mindful of brush strokes because we've got so much shimmer. And Sea Spot Scared it looks really cool over black, but the same thing. It's got those larger type of micro flakes, so make sure you are going even on your coats. Maybe even icing method. Baby Boom, I personally would not topper this one. It's too cute, if that makes sense by itself. Ghost Faced, you can see the stark contrast between the, the background and that magnetic pigment, but again, I personally would not. The Headless Ghost looks really cool over black. I think this is a really interesting way to wear it. Otherwise, I would do matchy match blues. Buckets of Boo is really stunning, truly, over black. I think you can get a little creative with this one with matchy match colors. 
Here Lies Beetlejuice is the same thing as Let's Watch Horror Movies. So same disclaimer there for streaking. Can I Keep You is going to be really cool over pretty much any color, but please know it does have a milky type of base. So that's a factor to keep in mind. And perhaps you can help solve a mystery. Looks really cool over black too. And I think there's quite a bit of versatility with that. Night of Frights is a topper. So of course it works. And you can see all that little hollow fine dust going throughout it. And then Bat to the Bone. This is really cool. Again, very much like the previous one is a topper and it's going to look great over anything. So the pre-order is going to start September 6th at noon central time, and it's going to run until September 14th at noon central time. I will link you all below to Wildflower Lacquer's site if you want to check that out. And I'll also link you to Bat World, which is uh, that charity that we discussed momentarily ago. And I will also link you to the Facebook group if you want to get in there and see that and all fun stuff. Interact with Taylor. She's super awesome. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.